Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the analog sticks on your Steam Deck. These I have, these aftermarket from Gilly Kit. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've been saying it a million times in this good video. If I'm not pronouncing, pronouncing it correctly, feel free to correct me in the comments below. Anyway, uh, these are hull-based sensors, so they use magnets instead of moving parts to determine analog sensitivity. Uh, what this is, the benefit of this is to be immune to stick drift. This is a big problem that are with the Nintendo Switch. I don't think that they're a very large problem on the Steam Deck themselves. However, if you find yourself having st uh, stick drift on these, I can very much recommend them. It's actually super easy to replace this and we'll go through it and you kind of see how easy it is. But uh, I go through the full part. So I show you how to open it up, show you how to remove them. I show you how to solder them. One of them I messed up on, so just follow my second one. And then uh, when putting them back together and then how to calibrate them after you install them. So I cover all that here. So it's a full how to on how to put these on there. So that's from there. Additionally, I'm going to review them at the end just to kind of cover base of it. For the most part, they are as good as the Steam Deck's analog sticks already. That being said, the Steam Deck's analog sticks are already really great. So what benefit do these really have? Not much other than being immune to stick drift. So they do have that benefit. If you really wanted them, I do. I would say that they're fine. They they aren't worse than what's on the Steam Deck already, but they are as good plus immune to stick drift. So if you need to replace them, I would say 100% go for these. Otherwise, I'd probably say just wait. But that's it. Let's get into the how-to and then my review at the end. I'll see you at the end. So in this video, we're going to be updating the analog sticks on the Steam Deck. We're going to be using these brand new analog sticks here. Thank you very much to Gilkit for sending these out to me for review. So why would you do this? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at these analog sticks. Before we do anything, we're just going to take a look at the calibration and how they work. There is These are actually really ex excellent. So why would you want to update to these? Well, let's say that you eventually get stick drift on these analog sticks and you need to replace them. At that point, you should opt for these types of analog sticks. And the reason being is because of the mechanisms inside of what actually causes stick drift is just a mechanical problem. And that was popularized pretty much by uh, the Nintendo Switch. But what's going on here is you can see that these are two hall sensors. So what that means is like at the, at the bottom near the, this analog stick, there is a magnet. And when we move this around, these sensors are able to determine that magnetism and then translate that into analog movement. So there is no, there is no moving part outside of this stick right here. These parts are non-moving parts and the the parts that are sensitive aren't being challenged in any way so these are stick drift resistant analog sticks so that's why you would want to put these on there we're going to go ahead and put them on they're going to replace these analog caps then we're going to also solder it up so that the capacitive taps caps still work and we'll go through that entire process and i'll kind of talk about that as we go through it first up we're going to take a look at the calibration of the sticks themselves just to make sure that everything's fine so so we can show a before and after right so if we go to test we'll do calibration all right so i've gone ahead and started testing and you can see right there that it's dead center and we're going to slowly push over to the left so really good responsiveness no cardinal snapping whatsoever like you can see even when we part uh, approach the cardinal directions that there is no snapping here it kind of just freely floats. This is ideal of what you're looking for in an analog stick. Now look, look at how we eclipse that circle as well. This is actually super important because there are some analog sticks where it'll kind of cap out over here. What happens here is that if we're doing this, a character that will run based on analog sensitivity really needs to be at this part of the circle right there. And if we're just below it, he'll like walk. So it's really important that I like this overextension here. This is something that I like what Valve has done. This is something that is really good. And you can see this right here is the dead zone. So the dead zone meaning that even when, you can see how it's like a little off center right now, even though it's off center, the Steam Deck is not going to validate that as an input. What you could do is if we stop the testing, if you went to the dead zone size, you can make this smaller and smaller and smaller but then if you made it too small, you're going to make it very sensitive. And then if you have any bit of off-centeredness when you replace that analog stick, what's going to happen is your character is going to move a little. So it really is recommended they have a little arrow of where to put that dead zone. And for the most part, that is pretty much accurate. So we're just going to do that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the right joystick. We're going to test this as well. And once again, the same thing. I said again weird. Again. All right. 
pretty straightforward, much like the other one. So that's pretty much it. Now we're going to go ahead and go ahead and open up the Steam Deck. So I'm going to go ahead and power down. So there are eight screws to take off on this. Pretty straightforward. What I like to do is just arrange them in the same configuration that they came out. So uh, just so you can see, I'm going to put it right there and we'll fast forward past this. All right, now that we've gone ahead and did this, now I have a plastic spudger tool here. This is actually kind of uh, soft plastic. What you're supposed to be using is a plastic spudger tool to go along the ridge. What I like, and you should always use a plastic spudger tool because those will have softer plastics than what the plastic is here, because you want to mar the plastic on the spudger tool rather than on the device itself. With this particular tool, the easiest and quickest way that I found to get in is to come in through the trigger. So I like to find an entry point right along there. And then that kind of busts it open. And then if you go over here as well, once you get those two sides opened, it's pretty much easy enough at this point to just kind of use whatever spudger tool you have and just run along where the clips are and it'll just kind of all come off. At this point, once you get this off, you have the business end here. Now what is recommended by iFixit is to remove this shield and unplug the battery. Uh, those two things I am not going to do. The last time I unplugged the battery, I destroyed a Steam Deck. So I'm not going to uh, undo the battery at all. Uh, the unit's powered off, so that's fine enough for me. Basically, in this particular regard, do whatever you think is best. If you want to undo the battery, go ahead and undo it. I'm going to leave it connected here. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and remove these two analog sticks. And then we're going to take a look at the little cable that you is needed that we have to solder onto here. It's going to be one cable so that the capacitive top still works. So let's go ahead and undo these. And once again, when you're removing these screws, kind of just align them so that they're in the same orientation. Let me get it over here. So that they're in the same orientation, so you want to have top, bottom left, bottom right, because there's only three screws here. Analog stick was pushing down, so make sure that when you're doing this, uh, doing this afterwards, just have your kind of finger fingers underneath it while propping it up. At this point, we can go ahead and flip this up, this little zero in ZIF connector. So I flip that up. Once that's flipped up, you can go ahead and pull on this to take it out. Okay. Uh, we have this. So now what we need to do, you see this this wire that's right here? This is uh, right and right. So what we want to do is there's that solder pad. So there's that giant solder pad right there. It's super easy to hit. You really shouldn't worry about this at all. Might be better to undo this beforehand. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up like that and out. Okay. Now again, keep your hand underneath there propped. All right, so thankfully all of these screws that are here are the same size. So thank you very much to Valve for making that super easy. Uh, there is no real nece necessity to have those in the correct orientation. They're all the same screw, so it doesn't really matter. So at this point, I'm going to take the Gilly Kit stuff and I'm going to take these over to a place where I can get this soldered. We'll take a look at that happening. Let me put these in the right way. Okay, I'm gonna go and get these caps off. We're gonna cut that lead off and then solder it onto here. And then we're gonna replace it and then do the calibration and then we're pretty much done. This is actually super fast. Sucks. All right, so right here, you can't see it, but there's actually some glue that they have on there as well. So instead, I don't know of any way that I'm going to be able to get that glue out. So I'm just going to cut as close as I possibly can. And then I'm going to strip away some of that wire at the end to uh, expose the copper. And then I'll solder that lead on to the other ones. Let me get underneath it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and strip that lead. I'm going to take this exactly as it is. So this is the left unit. And I'm going to go ahead and get the left one from the ghillie kit. 
Okay, so you have left and left. I don't think it's super necessary, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and line that up. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this analog top. Once I get the top off, I'm gonna bring it around town, get it a little bit closer. And then solder that on. Worst case, I might have to move this like this. Take this off. Can it go on one over? No, it can't. Okay. So we're going to get it nice and tight down here. Solder it on right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then this will be finished on one of them. All right, so this gauge wire is actually super thin. Even on like the thinnest that we have right here, it took some chunks to get it working. But I, I'm afraid of stripping it too much, so I just got into it a little bit. At this point, I'm just gonna get my fingernail underneath it and try to ride it up. And there we go, now we have an exposed lead. And I'm gonna go ahead and solder this on to this ginormous pad right there. All right, so that's now connected, but because of the length of it, when I go over, it's a little bit too short, so I'm gonna see if I can move the cap. I'm gonna see what I can do here. All right, so on that, I actually managed to cut it off with having a bit of the end still on there, which is great. So now I don't have to strip anything. I can just use that, and it's gonna give me that extra little length. Hopefully, I'll be able to actually have this one wired correctly. All right, so this one was a lot cleaner and I also cut it more perfectly. So now I'm gonna to try to put the cap on and this one should have all the range it needs and be like stock. Whereas my other one is not gonna be. So we're gonna see how that works out and I will report back to you guys. All right, so now that I'm back, we're gonna take a look at my analog sticks. So this one has full range and this one has full range. This one I cut a little short because again, there's glue that is on the original Steam Deck ones. But on this one, I managed to cut just at the right end. So this one is pretty much just like stock is. Also, I did a much better solder job on this one than I did on this guy. So you can see all the flux and stuff that I have, uh, the no clean flux. That stuff is sticky. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and install these now. And then before we uh, connect and power them up, let's go ahead and open up these. I guess we don't have to do it right now. We can do it when it gets there. So I'll go ahead and, so this is, all right, let's go ahead and line it up. It has little guides. So right there, that's a guide hole. Right there's a guide hole. So you really can't mess this up that much. And now we have the ghillie kit ones installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and start screwing these in. I'll just do this without you guys seeing. Now again, I, you should really hold this up when you screw it in because if you place it down, the analog stick will push this back out. So after this is in, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's not fully tight all the way. Once you get them mostly in, you wanna start slowly tightening in a circle around until they're all fully tight. And then we can see what that looks like. So it looks like a standard controller, but underneath we have those hole sensors. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and connect this ribbon cable. And again, make sure that the Steam Deck is not on. This cable kind of wants to already go in there. So when you use these, uh, these zip sockets, you're gonna kind of want to push up to it. These lines that you see right there indicate where it should be when it's closed more or less. So you can see that I just push that in right there. And this is this part right here is really stiff, so it gives you a nice firm way to kind of just put it in there. And then when we secure this, you can see that where it was secured, it meets, it meets right at the line. If you still see that white line, it's not in enough. You need to open this up again and push it back in, all right? So now we're gonna do this side. Now this is the one that has the little squirrely cable. So we're gonna see if this screws me up at all. All 
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and connect this ribbon cable. Again, push this up. And then we wanna insert this in here. Okay, that line looks like it matches up. Looks good, close it up. Okay, and good, we're all connected. All right, so now before I power it up, you don't really want to put the back casing on at this point. So let's go ahead and just kind of, okay, these feel good. All right, so just going to kind of center them up a bit before I power this on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and power this on. Okay, controller, and we're going to want to do this. Okay, so now we're going to, Stop testing, okay. Now look, you can see right there that it's off a little bit. So what they recommend doing says, uh, after installed, press the tiny switch on the joystick module to get the joysticks calibrated. Do not touch joystick during the process. Okay, go to the joystick calibration interface. Okay, so it's showing that these are off right here. Follow the steps just in case. So there is a calibration method that we can try to do via the uh, console so let's go see if we can't do that it says okay so now we have to figure out how we can calibrate these now how do I touch test the capacitive touch sensors let's uh, get out of here no we want to go to begin test so L3 and R3 are working but there's gonna be there has to be a way Okay, so let's go ahead and try to jump into Linux and try to see if we can just run the calibration. So we want to go to power and we want to switch to desktop. All right, and from here we're gonna do Steam X. Well, we have to wait for Steam to load. All right, Steam's loaded now. Once Steam's loaded, we can do Steam X to bring up the keyboard like it shows right here. So we'll go down there. All right, so now what we want to do is where is the super key? I guess I don't need to, I can just touch down here. And then if this wasn't covering my thing, okay. We're going to do console, enter. All right, so we have the console here. Let me move this down so that it is a little bit more visible. Okay. All right, so now what we want to run is thumbstick, T-H-U-M, and then we do tab for tab completion. So we have thumb here and then we're gonna press tab. Thumbstick cal v, yep, okay. Okay, we're going to press enter. All right, so we are going to press enter. All right, so now again, we're not touching the thumbsticks at this point in time. Let's go ahead and move this over here. Okay, so it says connect to the controller. Okay, release all thumbsticks to their center resting position and press A. Okay, so these are resting right now. So now we're going to press A. Okay, we're gonna press enter. Okay, rotate both thumbsticks 360 degrees through full extent twice. Release and press enter. Okay, it says both. Okay, so we're gonna go up. We're gonna go one, two, back to center. Enter. Okay, so it says thumbstick calibration has succeeded. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and jump back into Steam. Okay, open calibration in here, test. Hey, look at that, it's dead center. All right, that's cool. Nice. All right, so this looks good. Let's go over the right joystick, start testing, dead center. All right. All right, so these are the, these are the hall sensor joysticks from Gillikit. All right, so the only thing at this point 
uh, I'm going to re put this back together and then we're going to test the capacitive thumbsticks and see if that works. And then for there, then this is done. This is complete. And then I'll give my kind of final say in this. But right now, like if we look at this, there is no cardinal snapping whatsoever. So we maintain the same type of scope that valve has. We still have the extended range, which is really nice. And look at this, no snapping, really good motion. This is solid. These are solid. All right, I'm gonna put this back together and screw it all together and then test the capacitive things and see if I did a good job there. Okay, so let me go to the joysticks and then for right touch, I wanted to, wait, let's get out of here real quick. And Okay, I'm gonna have it be, I'm gonna have these capacitive buttons be X. Okay, let's see what happens. We're gonna do here and we want this to be X. And on this one, we also want it to be X. Okay, moment of truth time. Here we go. Hey. All right, that one works. No. Oh! Gonna have to extend it. But yeah, no touch. But this touch works. Okay. All right. So that's just something to be mindful of. But it can work, obviously. And then this one I need to fix. Well, I'm glad that at least one of them's working. All right. So this this part right here is more uh, not. It's not represent. These are rep getting working are representative of my of my own job. So I messed up on this one. Let me just double check that I have that right. Edit layout, joysticks, yep, X button. No, it's not working. Okay, so this I don't have working very well, and this works. Okay, so now as in terms of analog stick, they, truth be told, they aren't better performing. All right, so for all intents and purposes, right, even though we can calibrate and everything is fine, I don't really think that these perform better than the analog sticks that are already on the Steam Deck. However, these will be immune to stick drift. So if you ever do get stick drift on your Steam analog sticks, or they break in some manner, I would say these are a worthwhile upgrade depending on you know whatever you're looking to get out of them. They work fine. They work as good as the Steam's analog sticks already. Let me get my other Steam Deck. I just wanna like do a feel. They feel identical. I don't think that there's any real benefit in terms of feel or use, like cardinal snapping, sensitivity, the feel of the travel, it's all very, very similar to Steam Decks already, their analog sticks already. So where does the where do these all right, so where does that get us here, right? If these more or less feel exactly the same as Steam Decks analog sticks already, they are just as good as they were before, which is great. Uh, the main benefit here is that you won't have any stick drift. They will be immune to that because there is nothing these sensors here aren't getting any wear and tear and the stick that you're moving is just moving a magnet that is having these hall sensors pick up different ranges so that's how it's working so there's less these are good replacement sticks would should you get them for better performance i don't think so that's not the case at all but they are solid they're just as good as the valve zone steam decks just with the added benefit here so yeah i can recommend them if you needed them as replacements Otherwise, I probably would wait on them. I'd wait on them until you actually needed them. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That is my look at Gilly Kit's uh, hall sensors on their analog sticks. They work great. I messed up on the solder job here, so I have to repair that. But it is working over here. Technically, I care about it more over here anyway, so I don't even know if I'm going to even bother. But that's it. That's my look at Gilly Kit's uh, hall sensor analog sticks replacements. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.